Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio, and today for my design team project for Gina B. Aaron's Designs, she has sent a package, and the challenge is to create something with it. So there's a few things in here that's crocheted doily, and that's one of her stencils. I think it's part of a 4x4. I will link it down below if you're interested in seeing the whole thing. I don't have um, that one, I don't think. Um, the whole stencil with all four faces and then this little package she's got a couple of um, I know I think she did those on a video they're like fake wax seals like castings I don't know what product she used um, but I really like that feather one I wanted to use it in this project but I don't end up using it in this project We'll save it for something else. And this is one of her paper clips. So much fun. Cute little turtle. Um, I put that one in my journal. <laughs> and what we have here, we have... This was really funny. So, see, I'm, I'm reacting to that one. Because I actually, the day I opened this, I had just gotten back from an eye exam where they taught me, told me what I already knew, that I'm going blind. No, I just need bifocals. Terrible. <laughs> and so these are some papers, and I did check her shop when I got this, and she does have packets of these in her shop. Now, she put a note on there saying she wasn't quite sure what she used. It could be water reactive. Be cautious when using, so I will... Uh, I will try not to use some sort of wet medium on them. Um, but I just thought I'd show you the papers. Um, this is what I end up using in the project. I really liked these papers. They were a lot of fun. And yes, you can get them in her store. I think I said that already. I will link it below. And so if you don't know who Gina is, she has an Etsy shop where she has original art and she also has stencils and stamps. So th those two were my favorite things <laughs> out of the whole package. I, I did set aside that one that I put on top there. I set that aside and I saved it for another project because I didn't want to do what I was going to do with it. So I thought about these for a while and what I wanted to do. And I actually saw not a video I saw a picture of something that someone did and I decided I would try to recreate something similar to it and so that is my plan so that piece of paper had a crease in it so I wanted a fresh piece of paper I'll use that for something else and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the back side this is the back side of this with some metallic gold metallic paint and I just decide to use random gold colors that I have this is kind of a let's play with the metallic gold see what colors of gold I have in my paint supply and what they will look like all together so I'm just gonna cover this up that one was Liquitex I think that one was con called antique gold um, Part of my Liquitex clearance shopping from last year, I think. And then this one is a new one. This is an Arteza um, Ancient Gold. I don't know. Uh, Robin McClendon loves this one. And everybody had been talking about it. And I saw it out there on Amazon. So I thought I needed it. I have enough metallic, gold metallic paint to last me for quite a while. <laughs> but they are a little bit different. Like the Liquitex was less translucent. This one's a little bit more um, translucent. You can see through it a little bit more, I think. Like I said, and it's an experiment in gold color. <laughs> And if, if you want, you can speed forward a little ways if you want to skip me painting the back of this thing. 
And this was a different um, gold from Liquitex, another clearance gold. This one's such a different color. Look at that. So less yellow, more greenish. But it was just kind of fun to play with the gold paint. I need to do some um, serious jelly printing or painting with all this gold paint. Make me some fun metallic stuff. Just kind of cleaning it off my brush, trying to spread it around. I'm using a Filbert, which is probably not the best paintbrush, but, you know, it was clean and not wet. This is another one. Sorry, I don't remember this one. I think this one was pretty transparent. Yeah, see, you can see it's really transparent. But yeah, when that Liquitex was on clearance, I bought one of each of the metallic colors. Which meant multiple different types of gold. <laughs> and this video is kind of long. It was a bit of a process. Um, I feel like the final piece was small. I would really love to do this on like a large scale project. But that wouldn't be for a video because it would be way too long. But um, I do think I want to do this on a large, larger scale. All right, so I'm just about done covering this with gold paint. We're going to go to the next part, which um, I let it dry, of course. And then I take the largest hole punch I have, which is just a two inch hole punch. And I'm going to try and get as many circles out of this as I possibly can. So that is the next step. And I only show you a couple, but I try to get it as close to the edge without getting a flat spot as possible. So there's my stack of little gold circles. So now I'm going to take these and I decided to go for kind of the neutral um, browns and stuff just because I wasn't sure where I was going to put it. And I'm going to do the same thing see how many circles I can get out. Um, trying to get an equal number of both. And I think I got a few extra gold circles, so I want it even, you know. You'll, you'll understand. I don't want two extra. Let's just put it that way. Or one extra. All right, so yes, I'm saving those little bits. I don't know what for, but some future project, they may be in there. I just have to remember to use a glue stick if I'm gonna glue them on. All right, so now we have our pretty papers and our gold papers circles. And um, this next part, I, I'm going to glue them onto a string, so I'm going to do like a grid pattern. And I was, I'd seen some guy, he'd figured out a jig for something else, and it just inspired me to make a jig for, a jig is something they use in construction, like in carpentry, where they can, um, it holds things so the measurements all are good. And I'm probably not making a lot of sense, but I decided to make this so that it would hold a couple um, of the circles in place a certain distance apart while I glued the string in and glued them together. And I'm just measuring um, about how far in I want the circle to go, which is halfway, which is one inch. And then I make the thing two inches wide so that I have some space. So I'm going to have a base. So the big one on the bottom is the base. And then this part 
is where I will have the half circles. And I try to use my hole punch to create these half circles, which it basically just gave me the impression of a circle. <laughs> but you know, yeah, see, it's not going to go, Marjal. Just give up now. <laughs> All right, so I pull out my scissors, and it did help a little bit because, I mean, this is this is backing from some packaging, and um, it doesn't bend very easy to make that cut. So I am going to use it again to do the same thing, Ugh, and pushing harder, thinking it's going to help. It's not really going to help. All right. So here they are. There's the two half circles. Hopefully you can see it. It's kind of light. And they're glued onto the base. And it's a slick packaging. So I thought that would be good. I do end up getting a little bit of glue and stuff. And it works to wipe it off pretty well. So now I'm lining up my string. I've actually tied a ring to the top of the string so that I can attach it on whatever I end up attaching it on. And then I'm just going to put a little glue down on there just to hold the string in place. And then I just kind of tuck it under. Stay, stay, okay. So now I'm going to take the circles, which I actually backed these with the same cardstock. Um, because they were showing the impression of the string too much, they still do. Um, but see, the idea is to get that lined up so you have perfect spacing. See, wasn't that a good idea? <laughs> I like that idea. It's not perfect, but you know, it works. Could probably do the same thing with cardboard. And yeah, that's my little paperweight. I use it to hold hold it in place. So then I can just shift it up, the next one up, just like that. Put this, put that in there, get a little glue on there, and put the paperweight on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'll hold it in place while I glue on the next circle. And I think do I do five? I do five down is all I do. But you you could go on forever. And I think I want to make a really, really long one of these. I like a whole bunch of them. Wouldn't that be fun? I know this it's not Christmas time, but wouldn't that be fun to do for Christmas and like have it as a a display, a Christmas decoration? I don't know. It seems like it would be fun. If I do it. It'll show up here somewhere. At least a video of the of the thing hanging somewhere. And I do try to make sure I get to the edge of the circle without going over because I don't want glue all over my my jig, but I do want the circles to glue shut. Um, there were a couple that didn't quite glue shut, so I had to. Um, I had to glue them a little bit more, but it worked okay. And I don't show you too many more of this, I don't think. I just wanted to show you enough so that you would get the idea of the process that I'm doing. Just, yes, you end up very gluey. that one in there put the weight on there I let it sit for a couple a few seconds really not very long um, just long enough to let that glue sit a little bit and then okay is that been five yet yep so I snipped the end off because I have a long string going 
and then what I did was I took all of those um, and I did five six strand, strands of them I put them under weight just to make sure they got nice and flat it's pulling them off the back and I yeah I put weight on left them overnight So there they are and now you can really see the white along the edges so I decide to go around all the edges with some ink. So I just take um, a sponge and some brown. I did brown. I think it was walnut. Is that one walnut? Can't tell. And I just go around all the edges and get rid of any white that's showing. And if my thing didn't line up quite right, I actually took um, a brown pen, felt pen. Actually, I think I ended up using a metal, metallic gold one and just filled in little white areas that had too much white showing that the ink wouldn't quite do. So there they are with all the white missing. See, I told you this was a long video. <laughs> So the next part is to attach them to something. So I just happen to have a long branch, skinny branch. Oh wait, no, I'm going to, I have to use the stencil. So I'm going to use her stencil, the four, one of the four faces that she sent with the package. And we're going to get a face on here. I'm just going to use that brown ink again. And I decided, you know, I fill it and you can fill the the um the lump from the string. So I, then I grab a sponge like it's, it's thicker than a mouse pad. It's a stamping pad, I think. I don't know. One of those things, you know, one of the many things I found on clearance. <laughs> Just to give it some, give it a little give so that it doesn't create a harsh line where that string is going through. And I just put the face on. There we go. <laughs> and I decided to do it to the gold side too. And um, I wasn't sure how well it would work. And from the angle I was sitting when I did it, I couldn't see that there was a face there at all. If I could see that, I would have lined it up better the second time. But I couldn't see it at all, so I just stuck it on there and drew this with a marker. And yeah, later when I looked at it, I realized you can kind of see the other stenciling. So you get a little bit of a weird sort of shadow, but it's okay. It's the back side. That's just in case it rotates. So see what I mean? Maybe you can see that. I don't know. Um, all right. So now that that's done, we have to figure out how we're going to hang this. So here's my tree branch. And yes, it's really straight because it's a weed tree that just grows like crazy. And so I end up with tons of those little straight sticks. And sorry, I'm completely off the screen there. Okay, so I've tied a knot on one end. Now I was thinking I would loop and wrap at the same time, but I decided that would be hard to... Um, keep the strands level. So instead, I decide, so I'm getting them all down there, I decide to loop them through that string and then wrap a second string around that string. And remember I said I had tied those all two little loops. It's from my jewelry supplies. Yeah, there we go. 
And I did that before starting them so that they were all exactly the same length. And so there we go. All right, so here I'm just kind of thinking this through in my head how I want to do this. And then I realize if I have them equal distance side by side side as they are horizontal as they are vertical then those strings need to be two and a half inches apart so I pull out the ruler start measuring them two and a half inches apart and I get me some there we go get in the picture trying to get in the picture without all that stuff falling to the floor <laughs> All right. Here's where I decide I will tape them where they're supposed to be and then I can start wrapping and then I will pull the tape off as I go. So, pretty sure I did them two and a half inches apart. That would give them the little bit of a gap in between. It might be a little less than that, but that was the plan. <clears throat> So if you've made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you um, found it and have been finding this informative. If you want to give this a try, I think sometimes I do things the hard way. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how else I would have done this. <laughs> um, but... I also want to remind you, this is for the Gina B. Aaron's design team, and she has, I have links to her link tree in the description box below, links to the blog, and that will show you the other design team members and what they are doing this month, or have done this month, I'm a little slow, um, and also to her Etsy store, where you can find all of her fabulous products. All right, so here I'm going this is what I'm going to start wrapping around that string. So I decide to rig up something to hold this up and still be in screen. So yeah, that's my watercolor brush bucket and then another vase that's holding more paint brushes. I know I have way too many paint brushes. And we're just going to wrap these around. Sorry for the blurriness. That's how my camera is. It doesn't autofocus. I'm just trying to keep that as tight as possible. Um, I honestly don't know what kind. It's not really string it's like jute string or something it's really rough and kind of natural sort of filling and it doesn't stay in a ball very well at all like as I wrap this this thing just devolves into a mass so I have to stop every once in a while and um, wind it back up. This is what I'm doing now. It's winding it back up onto the ball. And we can 
keep going with our winding. I gotta get my ruler in there because everything's shifted. Just make sure it's in the right place. Hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing. I do have this a little bit sped up, maybe um, twice as fast as a normal speed. Probably could have gone a little bit faster. But uh, I didn't do it. So you don't have to watch anymore. We'll just cut that short right there. I do continue obviously and do the rest and then here it is. I'll, I've got a couple of little videos here at the end I took with my phone so you can see what it looks like hanging free and then I have a couple of shots. I have one picture of it hanging in a window which if this was translucent, ooh, if you did this with like rice paper or something, that could be cool. Um, it would be cool in a window. And I have it up against a wall in another picture. But I, it feels way too small. So um, yeah, I wanna do this like really big. Wouldn't that be cool? I need a bigger hole punch. <laughs> I hope you liked this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Heck, pin it on Pinterest. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.